I wanted to extend a personal thank you to you and the creators of California Dreams. You know, having grown up on this series, it's the first Aww. time that I saw someone who looked like me on screen and s- celebrate our culture in mainstream television. I don't think I appreciated it as much as I did back then or realized its impact until now. And you've been such a trailblazer for this community. Have you had a chance to reflect on your impact that you've had on audiences and continue to have? And how often do you get stopped about Samantha's song, Mama Said, and the year woo? <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Kevin, for that. First of all, I will just backtrack to when the show was happening and we started getting fan mail and people would tell me, hey, you are someone who looks like me. I've never seen that. I I think I didn't really know how to take it in. Mm -hmm. Um, At the time, it was that I was just a young actor who had this great break and I really wanted to just belong, right? And he, here's the thing, we all want to belong someplace, yeah. somewhere. And at the time, I, I didn't really want to stick out. You know, already my my character was this quote unquote foreign exchange student who moved to the US. And so that already made me feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when people really started saying, hey, uh, it really makes a difference to me. It, it really touched me. And I think going years later, here we are, I am really able to really take that in a lot more than I was able to, you know, back when I was pretty much a kid, you know, mm. um, because it is a lot of responsibility. Yeah. I, I I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? You know? And so, um, but again, uh, you know, it's a process and I think it's, it's, it is a it, it is a lot of uh, responsibility, which I I didn't know just being placed in that position that that would turn into that. Mm. So it feels very it feels really um, full circle now that I'm a full grown adult. <laughs> I can really understand the impact of that. Not that I didn't then, but it it hits me yeah. all the way through now that I really understand what that means. You've been a pioneer for our community. And, you know, this series has really stood the test of time. Was there a moment when you were filming it that you realized you were creating something special? You know, again, as an actor, you go to work and you hope that you get a season's worth of shows and that people still want to to watch something or listen to something or be a part of, of, you know, a creation. And I think all of us as a cast felt how special our chemistry was and it still lasts to this day. It is is quite, quite fascinating because that doesn't always happen. But when you're on a show, again, you don't know what's going to hit. You don't know what is going to be a huge success or a flop. You know, you can feel like something is special, but until you see the ratings or you come back for another season, then you're like, okay, great. We made it to the next season. We have something here. But regardless of that, we always felt that we had something special together, despite whether you know, we got picked up or not, there still was something very, very um, just unique about what we brought together. You answered my next question, but you know, so often with shows, you'll hear afterwards how the cast didn't get along or they've lost touch throughout the years, but you've all remained such a tight-knit group. Why do you think this friendship has only grown with time? And how did you all initially build that bond? You know, I think it is, it takes a certain type of person to um, stay in relationship, you know, for so many years. Did we know that that was going to happen? I don't think so, but I, I will just say in my personal case, you know, when I met Kelly, I I definitely felt um, a connection to her and we actually auditioned for the role of Tiffany Smith. And so Um, when I didn't get it, I was so happy for her. Of course. I mean, she completely fits the role, right? I mean, obviously she, she booked it, but, um, but yeah, I just felt this, um, instant sort of connection. And then when we got on the show, 
we all just had so much fun together and we were devastated <laughs> pretty much when we found out that we weren't coming back for um, another season because the they had fulfilled their um, requirement for syndication. And so we mm. really were sad. That was, that was a real, um, that was a real feeling. They had to tell us, please don't be as emotional on this take. We have to get through it. And we're like, what do you mean? So, um, that was real. Um, and I think to this day, because we had become so close, some of us, we just kept in touch, you know, um, Kelly and I were in each other's weddings and, Michael doesn't live too far from me. I actually am going to William's office today because I have some things for him um, that I need him to go over. And then for us who are now in different cities or different countries, we've been able to stay in yeah. touch social media, which we didn't have before, which has been incredible. So, um, and since we've done the reunion, we've been able to be in more contact, which was just so, that was really fun. It's also funny how things work out in life. You know, like you're saying, you just you auditioned for the role of Tiffany, which ended up going to Kelly. What was it like getting that call from Peter about joining the second season? And how did he initially <laughs> pitch Samantha to you? Well, I was doing a, a, a musical theater tour and I get this call from Peter and he says, hi, Jenny, it's Peter Engel. And I said, oh, hi. And he said, do you want to come home and do a TV show? And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, we have uh, someone who's uh, leaving the show and, and we wrote this character for you. And he kind of explained it to me. And I was like, okay. And he said, a lot is riding on this, Jenny. So we have to make it work. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so that was just a funny phone call. It, it, it felt like it came out of the blue, but I feel so, so very fortunate that he remembered me and mm -hmm. that uh something you know that I did left an impact on him and uh the NBC execs to be able to trust Peter to just basically hire this young girl who was on tour who didn't get another part but they were basically like this has to work so that's a lot of, again a lot of different pressure that I didn't really know what I was getting myself into but I just followed it and here we are today yeah, what's meant to be yours will be yours. You know, we've spoken to a few of your castmates and they sung your praise for bringing this reunion together Aww. in New York City, which I imagine is a huge undertaking. And there's so many unique yeah. components to it. How did this yeah. all come together? Originally, we did another concert that was yeah. in Los Angeles. Kelly and I produced it. And the funny story about that is we were at another concert of uh, a group who, which will remain nameless. And she leaned over and said, well, why can't we do this? And I said, well, we can, but we have to do it ourselves. So cut to Los Angeles in, I believe it was April of 2019. We put up our first reunion concert that was hosted by our friend, Derek Berry, who does all the pop-ups around the country, the Barbie Cafe, mm. The Golden Girls, the Saved by the Max, the Good Burger, and um, we ventured into that concert with him, and he just helped us produce this beautiful, you know, reunion. We sold out in twenty minutes. It was insane. And then cut to earlier this year, I was doing a photo shoot for Wingman Magazine, and just through you know conversation, the main editor Andrew Christie said. Jenny, you know, why aren't you guys doing this still? And I said, it's funny you say this because we were thinking about doing this again. So I said, hey, if I'm still thinking about it a week later after this photo shoot, then it means that maybe we have to do this. So mm. I was thinking about it a week later. I called Kelly. We talked about it. Are we doing this? From that point forward, it was getting the cast back together. And we thought, how fun would it be if all of us could be there and, and um basically that's what happened and yeah so it was definitely a huge undertaking but an undertaking that was filled with so much love for um our fans and yeah. our I don't know, even want to say show it's just it's California Dreams is its own entity at this point and our love for each other like we just we loved hanging out that that was just we were 
that was one of the main components that brought us together because we just wanted to see each other. And again, give back to our fans who have given so much to us throughout the years. It was just, um, it truly was a fantastic, magical evening. It felt like such a celebration of the fans and, and the chemistry that it you really, all had. And you've, you shared yeah. on social media that it took a few days for you to take everything in. What will you remember <laughs> most from that event? And what were some of the highlights? Oh my gosh, it kind of makes me emotional. There were so many highlights from beginning to end. And how we were just talking about, we've remained close. We, we've had yeah. this chemistry. I thought some of us were getting there at separate times, right? So the majority of us got together, or the majority of us got into New York City on Wednesday evening. And as soon as all of us were landing, where are you? What are you doing? We're at the pizza place next door. Well, come next door, you know? So all of us who had landed, whether we were tired or whether we were in sweats or whether we were on the other side of town, we just, we, we we went next door to the pizza place and it was just like the most fun reunion that felt like no time had passed, including our cast members who had not met each other. It yeah. was like once they met each other, it was like they had known each other for so many years. That's what was, that's what Diana was saying about Brentley. It's like, wait a minute, we haven't met before. I feel like I already know you. So again, there is something about California dreams where our chemistry just speaks for itself. And, you know, let me just be real for a minute. We are like a big, crazy family. You know, we fight like brothers and sisters and go through it, but it really is like, we're this big, this big, I can't talk this big dysfunctional family. So, yeah. which is a fun thing, you know, but that we have each other's backs. Yeah, when we talked to Jay, he said he, he would find any excuse to to get together with all of you. And you know, <laughs> this has been one of the the most talked about and biggest reunions of the year. Have there been any oh. early conversations about potentially doing another one? We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. You never know. We might end up in a town near you. <laughs> yeah. You have a huge New York fan base. So you got to go back and do another one. What was so sweet and what I did not realize is so many people came to me and said, you know, Jenny, um, we don't get a lot of things like this here. And I, I thought, and I asked, I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, we don't get a lot of things like this here. And so the way that I interpret that is New York City is known for um, entertainment, but Typically, there is large scale projects that maybe mm -hmm. go on um, at the garden, you know, or um, or Broadway shows or even off Broadway shows that maybe people have inklings about. But a sort of mid sized sort of tour that comes through the city, I guess, is something that um, has not been experienced by a lot of the locals. So we're so appreciative to all the locals who came out and even the locals who are in the tri-state area who drove in or um, maybe, you know, they came in from Jersey or Connecticut or, you know, somewhere else that maybe is somewhat close, but it was just really interesting to learn that. And so to be able to bring the event to New York City in a capacity like that uh, felt very, very special. Throughout your career, you've been a part of so many popular IPs with such dedicated fan bases. What yes. was your process like deciding what projects you want to go out, go out after because you've created such an impact on everyone? Wow, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You know, for a long time, it has been, uh, you go out for everything, you know, and for the most part, I, I do try to, at this point in the stage, um, because it has been so busy with just traveling around for the past few years for different mm -hmm. fan uh, comic cons and I'm still you know doing my voiceover work every day um so now at this point I I do have to be a little bit more particular in what I expend my energy on only because um I have to be able to have enough energy to do these projects, like to be able to have the opportunity to produce 
a large scale show <laughs> like we just did in New York or show up to voice uh, one of, you know, for example, Chun-Li, you know, in Street Fighter Six, that takes a lot of energy yeah. and recording for a couple weeks or, you know, even a few days, it still takes a tremendous amount of energy. Plus, when I'm not in the studio or producing after I'm done at the studio, I'm doing auditions in my booth here. So um, these days I'm doing my best to be a little more just um, not that I would exclude any opportunity, but just really look down at the scheduling at, you know, the yeah, project yeah. to make sure, do I have the energy to take this on and really devote all the, the, the time and passion I have into, into whatever is next. I think there's a lot of physicality that people don't well, realize. With, with they realize it. Oh yeah. You, the more physical you are, the, the more grounded it becomes. So if you ever watch any voiceover artists in their booth, it's, it's kind of crazy when you're watching people because it's a, a physical, a physical yeah. sort of um, approach, which makes it more real because you can't be seen. Yeah. So, yeah. And you've played so many strong female characters throughout your career. Who were the women in your own life who've shaped the, the storyteller that you are today? Wow. Yes. Um, I, I'm just very fortunate that I do have so many, um, strong, amazing women in my life. And it makes me a little emotional, you know, um, aside from my mother, who is an immigrant to this country, mm. um, all my close girlfriends have been role models for me, um, have been sisters to me. I always think in my close circle, there's like, I don't know, seven of my girlfriends, which Kelly is one of them. It, it's like, I go to her um, for certain things, not even only for certain things for, even if it was two o'clock in the morning, I would go to her, you know, for an emergency. And she's been there, you know, even if so much time has passed, um, that's the kind of, of relationship that I hold with so many of my strong girlfriends who mm. they just are such inspirations and they are pioneers in what they do, how they carve out their lives, how they go about approaching life. They are just, I, I mean, I can't say enough about my girlfriends in my life um, because I wouldn't be the person I am without them and learning mm. from them and having the support from them. I couldn't, it makes me very emotional. I probably could have, you know, gone through and, and produced the concert without any of them, to be quite honest, because, you know, it gets really tough yeah. when you're in the trenches and sometimes you are so in the trenches and you're like, wait a minute, what is the next right step? And so to be able to have amazing eyes and amazing support and, you know, like Kelly just happened to call and all the right times, you know, to be able to get us to the next point, which I think every person needs that. Every person mm. needs an amazing support group to go through life. Like they say, it does take a village to be yeah. a successful person and how lucky I feel to have women like that in my life. Mm. 